Hello and welcome to a DFS preview for the 2022 RBC Canadian Open. My name is Eric and here at Sweet Spot DFS it's all about trying to hit the optimal lineup every single week. And we start here with the preview video and trying to target the optimal lineup. We'll be going over all the stats that I think are going to be important at this event. And I'm going to show you what stats are important through what I call the bucket system. The tool of analyzing top 10 performances at this event dating back to 2013. If you're unfamiliar with it, I have a video in the description below that'll explain all about it. You'll learn a lot in the first five minutes, so I highly encourage you guys to go watch it if you don't already understand what that is. Now, I'm also gonna be talking about the tournament information and golf course being used at the RBC Canadian Open. But before we get into all that, I will review the Memorial Tournament. Try to keep that super quick. We're gonna try to keep this whole video super quick um, and try to do that going forward. But before we get into all of that, a reminder, I like to do giveaways. I'm going to give $10 away this week. Um, if you've been following me the last few weeks, we've been trying to get to 400 subscribers. Hasn't had any luck, so I'm not going to extend it too much further. I'm just going to give $10 away at the end of this week. And if you want an entry into this giveaway, comment down below. Well, first of all, be subscribed. Comment down below and give me your favorite 10K golfer this week. That's just one way you can enter. You can, you can leave whatever comment you want down below and you'll get a free entry into this giveaway. I am also doing a strategy video tomorrow. So if you want an additional giveaway, go comment on that video as well, as well as being subscribed, of course, and you'll get an additional entry into that giveaway, only increasing your odds of winning the giveaway. Um, another one that I like to run is a prize picks giveaway. So I like to give $20 away for anyone who signs up on prize picks using the promo code sweet spot and putting at least an initial deposit of $20 into their account. That way you can kind of play this for free. Plus prize picks will match your deposit up to $100. So that 20 turns into 40 and all it's going to cost you is sign up inf information and that initial deposit. There's a link in the description below. that gets you straight to that sign up page and it'll already put in that uh, sweet spot promo code for you. So just saves you a little bit of time, but I will give $20 away for anyone who signs up using the promo code sweet spot. And of course I like to provide a cheat sheet, which I'll bring on the screen. Now it's a little zoomed out. Hopefully you guys can see it, but it's everything that I'll be talking about in the preview video. And also in the strategy video, you get all of the information that I use when building lineups. So if you want to follow along with me in this video, again, link in the description below it'll go straight to that cheat sheet highly encourage you guys just make a copy of it by going to the file menu make a copy here i'll show it to you guys on the screen you can't see me go to file but make a copy is right there make a copy for yourself name it whatever you want um that way you can mark it up as we go through this maybe you want to delete some players that's totally up to you guys you'll have the flexibility that way you won't with my copy because i don't give anyone um, writing access you can only read it so again link in the description if you want to follow along and then tomorrow I'll be showcasing the optimizer if you want to get a head start on that just reach out to me at sweetspotdfs at gmail.com and say hey I'd like to use your optimizer of course be subscribed and comment down below um, those are really the only criteria that I need in order to send you that that optimizer um, I just want to reward anyone who participates on this channel. So those are all the giveaways. Let's go ahead and talk about the Memorial Tournament. Billy Horschel's your winner. He ran away with it basically on Sunday. I didn't really get to watch a lot of golf because I was playing a lot of golf. I mean, it's been a while that I've, I've actually been able to play as much as I did. I think I played 54 holes over the weekend, so it was, it was fantastic. Played 27 Saturday and 27 Sunday. I got to see a little bit of the tournament. I saw how fast the greens were. I saw how hard the uh, around the green game was. Like that rough looked pretty gnarly. And outside of Cam Smith, like I didn't see a lot of people really get up and down very easily. Uh, and those greens were lightning quick, 13 and a half. So Billy Horschel actually won at 12 under. Let me show, show or 13 under, I'm sorry. He won by four strokes over Aaron Wise. Uh, like I said, he kind of ran away with this, so cool with billy he's not one of my favorites i know he's a very polarizing golfer out there i don't really care uh and i kind of figured once rory was out of it 
I really didn't have a leg to stand on because I went 90% heavy in my lineups using Rory, as well as half Will Zalatoris and half Cam, uh, Cameron Young. So unfortunately, Cameron Young Sunday kind of fell off, but so did Rory. The only person that really was a, a bright spot for me was Will Zalatoris. So made half of the money I put in, so didn't really lose a lot, but still not where I want to be. However, some, some high notes here. If I go to the bucket system summary and we take a look at how well this, this bucket system did last week, I know I didn't create a video, I was moving, so you guys really couldn't see this. Um, but what I want to do is hide some of this information, so I'll hide this column. Um, we'll also hide this column and try to get... Let's see, what else do I want to hide? Here, maybe I'll open these back up and just take away the top five frequencies. I just want you to see... Um, the success rate of these buckets. Yeah, I'm going to have to hide some more stuff. And one more, we'll do this one. Okay, so all you guys need to know is this is formula driven. All of these Y's over here mean it was a success. The buckets were a success. And if you can tell, 100% of the buckets were a success last week. Now we're kind of living on a 94% success rate when it comes to these buckets. This only improves it, but you know we've, we've looked at the last 40 weeks of, of events and with that that many events the success rate isn't really going to change but it's nice to see a hundred percent of the buckets hit uh, and what i mean by that is the projections that i have for each of these buckets they were all 100 percent correct so as we go through this again if you are unfamiliar with the bucket system highly encourage you guys to go watch the video in the description below but what i like to do is based off of historical stats at this event and the golfers in the field for this year I create projections to tell you, hey, you want to you want to put one to three golfers who top 20 this event. I mean, that's the, the bucket that I highlighted the last year one. That means they top 20 this event last year and you wanted somewhere between one to three. Two showed up in the optimal lineup. Three were inside the top 10. And if you can get all six of your golfers inside the top 10, you have a really good shot to hit the optimal lineup. But you have even a better shot to win a GPP. So that's the whole purpose of looking at top 10s as well as optimal lineups. The Memorial bucket system was 100% correct, which was awesome. Now another piece to go with that is if we look at the rankings that I have, because those tie into our marquee tee time pairings. So just looking at the top 10 here, if I were to sort this by top 10, you can see all of these guys here. All of the rankings were pretty darn good. Denny McCarthy was 74th in my model. He's the only one outside the top 50. So it was pretty darn good. Like Denny McCarthy did really well. Um, I, I should say this, my, my rankings did really well. Now what I like to do is I actually transition this into the marquee tee times. Now I've added a new column to my spreadsheets called group rank and it just shows you what the top group in the field was. I think this will be really fun to analyze going forward just to see of these groups, you know, which ones tend to do well? You know, obviously I've been keeping track of the top 10 groups for basically the last year, but I haven't ranked them. But So now that I am, it'll be fun to analyze. Now the whole purpose of this is basically all of the golfers that have um, a dark black number, uh, not a dark black number, just a black number, these are all marquee tee times. The golfers here in the light green text are honorable mentions. You can see Billy Horschel is in one of those honorable mention groups and he obviously won the tournament. Now the whole rules, I mean, or I shouldn't say the whole rules, but the rules of the marquee tee times are, and I've, I've, uh, I've modified this over time. I used to have a calculation that I do. Now it's just a straight two to four golfers. You want to select two to four golfers in the marquee tee times to anchor your lineups around. This week, it was Patrick, or it was uh, Max Homa and Joaquin Neiman who were in the optimal lineup. Now, I also have a rule to say you don't want to pair up golfers in the same group. And here's a good, I mean, here's a good lesson that I can show you guys. So, Max Homa was in the optimal lineup. That's what this little tick mark here means. 
Um, and any golfer that has that little black tick mark in the top right hand corner, that's an optimal lineup guy. Now, the dark or this green salary is the sweet spot optimal, which is you want all six of your golfers inside the top 10 and you want the salary to be over 49,000. If I were to go show you what the optimal lineup was, and I usually do this, I forgot to, um, your optimal lineup left $1,700 on the table. So all the golfers, again, with the black tick mark here, they are in your optimal lineup. So you had Billy Horschel, Aaron Wise, Joaquin Neiman, 7,900, 7,500, and 8,300. And then you drop to 94, 87, and then 65. So that obviously brings down that, that salary qu quite a bit. And I, I'm a huge advocate of not leaving a lot of money on the table because it's just, it opens up more combinations of lineups. And it's really, it, it's harder to put together a good lineup leaving that much money on the table. So with all this being said, I try to find all six golfers inside the top 10 that make it really close to 50,000. So that's what I call the sweet spot optimal. And you can see that in, that includes Patrick Cantley at 10, seven, Joaquin Neiman at 8,300 and Daniel Berger 85, and then fill in the rest of the seven Ks that you see there. Um, by the way, just to go over this really quickly, I usually do this in all of my, my review videos, but we no longer do a review. Optimal lineup scored 573.5. The GPP winning lineup scored 549. Uh, so there was what? 24 points between that. This realistic lineup I'm talking about scored 555. So it beats the 549 the GPP winning lineup scored, meaning following the sweet spot optimal still is going to get you a GPP win. It's just not going to be the optimal, but it's also much tougher to get to the optimal. So going back to what we were talking about, now that you know all of these green salaries here are part of the sweet spot optimal, um, you can see three of these guys, well, actually two of them in the marquee tee times were in the sweet spot optimal, which is exactly the rules that we set out. So that's really great. Billy Horschel was super close, $7,900. You easily could have put him, I mean, he is part of the optimal and the sweet spot, obviously, because he won. Um, there are also other ways you can mix and match. Like you could, um, or can we? Yeah, I, I put some lineups together using some of these other salaries. So using a Patrick Cantlay. Let's see, who else was it? I'm trying to remember off the top of my head. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, so I I can't remember what... I, I thought about before jumping on here. It's okay. Rules are rule or the rules apply. Find two to four golfers in the marquee tee times. They end up showing in the optimal lineup and also the sweet spot optimal. So, and it also, the rules of not rostering golfers in the same group apply successfully. So this whole last week was a success when it comes to the sweet spot process. It's just you got to pick the right two golfers to anchor your lineups around. And, and don't get me wrong, you could have, you still could have done really well by, say, rostering Patrick Cantley with Max Homa, with Joaquin Neiman, uh, and a lot of these other guys here. You could, have, you could have rostered, well, maybe you couldn't have. Yeah, salary wouldn't, salary wouldn't allow you to do that. Um, actually, maybe it would have. Like, Brendan Steele, you could have had. Billy Horschel, Joaquin Neiman, like I said, those guys were all cheap. Scroll isn't working. Um, Max Homa, you could have put in your lineup. Don't think we can... Ooh, we can do this. So you could have Cantley with Homa. They were in the same group. So that would go against what I, what I try to teach you guys. Um, and I've highlighted five golfers. I still have $6,800 I can work with, so... I've highlighted basically five golfers in the marquee tee time or the honorable mention. They could have done well for you. They wouldn't have won you a GPP. They wouldn't have, I mean, you would probably have been in the top 10. So you still would have made some good money. Um, but I, I digress. Let's move on. So with all that being said, I just want to, again, show you the Memorial Tournament was a success with the sweet spot process. Let's go ahead and start talking about um, the, the Canadian Open. I'm going to take this down and bring up the tournament information. 
Canadian Open might be one of the, I, I'm pretty sure it is one of the oldest tournaments in Northern America or North America, I should say. It was established in 1904. This year it's being played in Ontario, Canada, uh, just outside Toronto, I believe. Um, there's usually a rotation. It'll go back to the Hamilton Country Club next year or golf course, whatever it's called, but it's Hamilton. It's It's been played here before. Let's look. Hamilton Golf and Country Club. Okay. So it will be played there again next year. Uh, and then they usually switch it up. Like Glen Abbey, there's like some political stuff that's behind that that do that is not allowing Glen Abbey to be a host of the Canadian Open, but it was built by Jack Nicklaus, the Glen Abbey that is, to be the host course of the Canadian Open. But with things changing, there's a company that wants to build residential prop, you know, uh, houses and, and condominiums and stuff like that over Glen Abbey. Um, so there's a, like I said, there's a political thing there. So that's why it's not at Glen Abbey anymore. So now we're kind of in this rotation. The last time, and you can see the go, you can see any of that. I forgot that you couldn't see this. I'm not going to, I usually redo things, but we're going to keep going. So Glen Abbey in 2018. And you can see the last four years, or 2018 to back to 2015. It probably even went further back than that. Yeah. Either way, what I'm trying to get to is there was there is a rotation now with some of these golf courses. Um, with the one here, St. George's Golf and Country Club being one of them. Um, we're gonna make this quick. I don't I don't want to stay on all of this too much. Field size 156. Cut is top 65 in ties. Average winning score at the Canadian Open is minus 18. This golf course, I'm not sure what it's going to provide. A lot of people think it's going to be 15 under, 16 under. It's going to be, I mean, that's really close to that average win score. I would say with typically how these, these tournaments are set up, we're going to see around 18 under being the winning score once again. Uh, and that means an average cut score will probably be low. So minus two, I think that's actually a pretty good projection this, this week. Now, what can you do with that information? Well, any of your research tools, you can look to see what the average winning score is, or just a winning score. Whenever a winning score was somewhere between minus 16 to minus 20, look to see which golfers that are in the field this year did well. If you guys have that access. That's awesome. If not, I'm working on something that'll give you access to something like that. So uh, hopefully somewhere in the future, I will be able to provide that to you. But if you're doing it on your own, that's one way to do it. And the same applies when the average cut score is minus two. You know, there are certain golfers that, that can hit that easier than others. Um, and it's really up to you guys, however you want to research that. Strength of field this week is actually pretty weak, considering the top end is pretty good. You've got Rory in the field. You've got Justin Thomas in the field. Um, Shane Lowry, Cameron Smith. You've got some good golfers that are in the field this week, but the strength of the field is still pretty bad. Now, the weather is somewhere between 70 to 72 degrees, Thursday, Friday, and the wind's going to be pretty benign. 5 to 10 Thursday, 10 to 15 on Friday. Um, Stanley Thompson was the architect of this golf course. I don't remember seeing Stanley Thompson in really anything uh any of the golf courses the pga tour uses so i don't know how much like what you can do with that information it had been renovated i think tom doak was a part of the renovations but we don't know what those renovations are so i wouldn't be too um gung-ho and kind of researching that architect or that golf course honestly the last time st george's was played was in 2010 and that's when carl Pedersen won it and he he has the lowest round at this golf course at minus 60. So do with that as you will. It, it's probably noise to, to most most people. And, and really, I, I would probably agree with that. But yeah, it's just data points that you guys can use for research. It's a par 70. Typically, it's a par 71. For, but for the PJ Tour, it's a par 70. 7,014 yards. That's pretty short. Um, one thing I can tell you about this golf course is... I did a you know hole by hole breakdown. I usually do that. I'll show you guys. Um, I didn't. I don't write any more of the things that I see in the golf course. 
but I do keep track of the shot shapes that go with all of them. Um, I bring that up because I looked off the tee box. There's a lot of narrow shoots that golfers have to hit through. So in my opinion, I mean, you guys can see the shot shapes right here that I think are required. I think a straight ball is better than any shot shape at this golf course. But if there was one that it favors the more than another, um, I think it's more of a fade. Like I could have put fade for more off the tee shots as well as a couple more approach shots. But I, I, you can only do so much with what is given to you. Like I look at Pro Visualizer. I like to go to bluegolf.com, uh, take their course tour. I also try to find more flyover videos to really like understand. But you usually get kind of some drone footage that is hovering 20 feet off the air, 30 feet off the air, or off the ground, I should say. Uh, you really can't get a really good full aspect of what you need to do off the tee. But it looked like there were a bunch of big trees that you had to hit around and you couldn't hit over. So I'm wondering if that is the case. And if it is, I'd rather hit, I'd rather find golfers who hit straighter golf shots than, you know, like a Bubba Watson who likes to carve shots. Um, and I'm looking at someone like a Justin Thomas. I know he can hit straight shots, but he's really trying to work, you know, he wants to work shots into certain places more often than not. Uh, nowadays, obviously, since Tiger kind of gave him that criticism, like you only hit two types of golf shots. You know, you need more shots if you want to win a, you if you want to win the Masters, basically. Uh, anyways, greens, bent grass. That's where I would do my research. Look at stroke team putting when it comes to the greens and with bent grass. The rest of it, you don't really have to care. Just just look at bent grass all the way through. I know it's Kentucky bluegrass in the rough, but you can still look at bent when it comes to that uh that type of grass or you could look at rye grass rye grass is another thing um you can take a look at so those are the data points that i think i would have you guys focus on the most um let's let's look at some past optimal lineups for the canadian the canadian open and in all reality it might not even be the best thing to do because we only have so many years this this tournament had or it did not play in 2021 and it did not play in 2020. The last time it was played was in 2019. DraftKings for this event goes back to 2017. So we have 2017, 2018, and 2019. I don't know, you know, if enough data is being provided to to make educated guesses as as, as to what we should do with building lineups this week. However, let's just go over it anyways. In 2017, your top six golfers actually equaled fifty thousand dollars so looking at how that was constructed you had a 10k a 9k eight two sevens and a six so that is the traditional lineup build that i advocate every single week start here and then mix and match you know your salary points so maybe it's not a 1098 but it's a 1099 and then a 776 or a 1088 seven 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 you know you could do something like that like i said mix and match um i wouldn't stray too far like i don't like a, a big stars and scrubs like i don't like doing ten ten nine six 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 i don't think that's a really good route to go you rarely ever see more than two six k golfers in the optimal lineup and you rarely ever see two six k golfers in a gpp winning lineup so just stick to one six k golfer again i always advocate just be random with your 6k golfer. Don't uh, don't spend too much time, you know, I guess trying to find an anchor play in the 6k range. I think that's kind of foolish. So don't do that. 2018, your optimal lineup was an 11k golfer, 8k, 7, 7, 7, 7. So like I said, mix and match. And this only left $400 on the table. So again, we're really close to 50,000, which is what I advocate for you guys to do. In 2019, your optimal um, was kind of all over the place. We had an 11th place guy in there at 6,100, but you had an 11, eight, eight, seven, seven, six. So again, it's that mix and match. Start with a 10K, two 8Ks instead of a 10, nine, eight. 
and then seven, seven, six. And that's how you got to your optimal there. And you only left $500 on the table in 2019. So those are all the GPP winning lineups versus, well, not so much versus the optimal lineups. We just went over the optimal lineup. Um, so to me, what it looks like starting with a 10K golfer is the right, the right approach. And this week we have six 10K golfers. Yeah, it is by far the best approach. It's the easiest for you to pick from. It's the smallest pool of golfers to pick from. Start with the 6K golfer this week. Uh, and we'll figure this out like in the strategy video. I think strategy video with the marquee tee times and all that stuff, that gives us our best chance to figure out which golfer to anchor our lineups around. But yeah, I think you start with the 10K golfer this week, especially because there are six. So the chances are just that much better. We don't need them to win. We don't need them to finish second or third. They just need to finish inside the top 10. That's all that they really need to do uh, in order for to give us a good chance to win a GPP. Okay, so from here, I don't really dig down into my rankings or my marquee tee times because I like to do that all in the strategy video. That's where we try to find six or at least try to find our anchor plays. Uh, I like to go over the buckets this week, let you know which stats matter the most so here we are i'm not going to spend a lot of time on this again i have a bucket system video down in the description below for you guys to watch if you are unfamiliar with it but i'm gonna kind of remove some of these i'm gonna start one stat category at a time there's no last year finish so i'm not looking at 2019 finishes finishing spots there's no last year buckets this week just to give you a heads up so I highlight it to remind myself to talk about it. There's no, we, we are not looking at last year buckets because everybody is in the did not play bucket. So there's no point. But the rest of them, oh, I should say this too, strokes gain stats. I have one year's worth of data because I started keeping track of them in 2019. So that's all I have. And it's really difficult to say from one year's worth of data, which stats are the best, but cream rises to the top most of the time. And having all the stroke stain stats in the positive has been the most successful bucket. So when it comes to projecting how many golfers are in that bucket this year, what the strength of field is for that bucket, it all points to, hey, roster, at least two stroke stain one guys. But telling you this right now, don't get wrapped up in this. It's one year's worth of data. Nowhere close to normalize it. So you can also just ignore that. So now two out of the six stat categories are just erased. Now we just look at last week, course history, recent form, and the salary buckets, which we could also probably wipe, but we'll talk about those. Let's just talk about them right now. Uh, the salary buckets. So like I told you, Probably finding a 6K or a 10K golfer is the best thing to do, at least start that way. And sure enough, you know, the success rate for 10Ks being inside the top 10, super good. We see two on average inside the top 10, you know, dating back to 2017. So with that being said, we have six golfers in that bucket this year. We usually see four. High, high success rate. 54% of 10K golfers have been inside the top 10 at this event. I don't think we get that clip this week, but my projection is somewhere between two to four. I think we're going to see a 10K golfer easy inside the top 10. And it wouldn't, be, it wouldn't surprise me if we see two. So do not shy away from playing a 10K golfer this week. Uh, the rest of the buckets are kind of just watered down a little bit. The next best bucket to choose from would be your 9K bucket. Uh, this, is, this will be an anchor bucket that we'll talk about in tomorrow's video. Whenever this is more than one, whenever the min projection is more than one and the max projection is more than two, that would be an anchor bucket as long as the bucket totals are under 30, which this is. So anyways, your 9Ks looking pretty good. Uh, I wouldn't play more than one. We usually don't see more than one inside the top 10. Uh, not a very high frequency rate that is and we never see more than one in the optimal lineup. So Just throwing that out there Probably just stick to one nine K 
and then the rest of them you can mix and match you can see what the projections are right here uh you can see the success rates and this you know how many points towards the strength of field those buckets go towards which they're all pretty weak so do with that as you will i always like to think you all you want a 7k golfer in your lineup no matter what i think this week you want a 10 a 9 and a 7 and then just mix and match the rest to build up over forty nine thousand. Don't leave more than a thousand dollars on the table. That is that is another sweet spot rule. Just don't do it. So we can move from salaries to last week buckets. We usually go from last year to last week, course history to recent form, and then go into salaries and, and stroke stance. So we're all over the place this week, but it's fine. It makes sense. Now, when it comes to last week, basically this or these six buckets give you a reason you know anyone who played last week should you roster them this week we can look at historical data that tells us you know yes or no but we also apply that to the golfers in this field the quality of golfer in this field so it's not just looking at how crappy the last you know 10 years at this event or nine years at this event were it's taking that information and applying to how strong the field is within these buckets with that being said basically anyone who played last week it's a crapshoot and i'm sorry to say that i know you probably want more you know precise numbers the only thing i can give you with some certainty is there's a high i shouldn't say high there's a good chance a good chance we see one golfer who top 20 at the Memorial Tournament be inside the top 10 this year. But it's it's not an anchor bucket. Like it only has six golfers in that bucket this week, but the projection, the max projection is under two. So we can see anywhere between zero to two golfers in this bucket. If I'm putting my money on it, we probably don't see more than one. Like one is the, the max in my opinion, and I would actually lean towards zero. Uh, we'll talk more about this tomorrow in the strategy video. We'll go over these buckets kind of in depth try to figure out, you know Are these golfers we want to select and then again any of those other buckets whether they finish between 20 to 40th place 40 to 60 60 to 80 or a missed cut or withdraw or DQ in, in the case of Hideki Matsuya, I don't think he's in the field this week, but either way um, All those buckets are just a crapshoot don't play more than two golfers in any of those buckets. I'd actually really recommend don't play more than one. So don't play more than one guy who missed the cut last week. It just doesn't look good. It does not translate to the Canadian Open. Best bucket, golfers who didn't play last week. We have 108 golfers in that field or in that bucket. But if we're being honest, this is an open. This is the Canadian National Open. There were qualifiers just like there are for the US Open. Some of these guys you've never heard of. And I'm, I'm guessing there's about 20 of them that you can just write off. That won't... They might flash for a, a round or two, but they're not going to be inside the top 10 when the dust settles. So this bucket's a little bit um, smaller than what it's showing. Still, you know... I wouldn't get too cute with that bucket. Just pick high-quality golfers... Like maybe a Justin Thomas who didn't play last week. Um, things of that nature. And, and, and pick your golfers that way. Or, or select golfers like that. Don't get like caught up in a, a Canadian, like a, a, Nash, uh, a Canadian citizen, essentially. Those that, you know, um, qualified for this event. I wouldn't, I wouldn't stick to that at all. Anyways, your did not plays. Best bucket for the last week buckets going into course history now we don't have a lot of course history because we didn't play in 2021 we didn't play in 2020 um we also don't keep track of 2013 or 2014 because my data starts at 2013 and it's my rule that we need at least two years of data before we start keeping track of course history so we just skip 2013 we skip 2014 we start collecting the data in 2015 so i only have four years worth of course history that's where we kind of like start turning the page on normal, like normalizing stats. So it's, it's, it's right in that cusp. You can do with this as you will. Um, I certainly 
wouldn't hold you against saying I, I don't care about this bucket that's fine because it's not it's not easy anyways we it's zero to two for anyone who's ever played the Canadian Open zero to two like pick zero to two golfers from any one of those buckets your best bucket are those that did not play who have never played the Canadian Open dating back to 2013 so Course history, probably not a great, or it's not so much course history, it's event history, right? So, probably not the greatest bucket to go with either, which really doesn't leave us a lot. Last week was one, now recent form's another. At least we can use recent form going all the way back to 2013, because we're really just looking at the last seven weeks of someone's average finishes. That's what co constitutes recent form. So with that being said, um... I think these projections are okay. It, it, it seems like it's really saturated towards our recent form two bucket, which is really good uh, recent form, but obviously not the best. Like your best is that zero to 20 or one to 20 average finishing position. So golfers who are super hot. Um, we only have three golfers in that bucket this year anyways. So I wouldn't be too concerned picking a golfer from that bucket. You could live here though. So I, I really could just tell you, just pick golfers with, uh, with good recent form and you probably will have at least five decent uh, golfers in your lineup. I wouldn't do all six, but you certainly can because the projection for recent form two is between two to five. Remember, we're always rounding down with the minimum. We're always rounding up with the maximum. So two to five. Well, this other bucket zero to two. So two and five, that equals seven. We have to pick a lineup with six golfers in it. You could pick them from these two buckets and you only have 22 golfers to select from. I don't know what it looks like with salaries. So, I would, you know, I say that, but maybe you can't do it anyways. But those are the two buckets that look to be great to select from. Now, the, the next best bucket is the recent form bucket right underneath it, that six or that 40 to 60 range. So really, really, really what I'm trying to tell you is this is the time to look at recent form over anything. The recent form buckets are better to look at than any of the other buckets. And I, I, I guess what I mean by that is the top buckets. We can really isolate the top two and select minimum three or minimum two, I guess. Two from the recent form two bucket, zero from the recent form one bucket. But you could probably select one from this one and three from that one. Actually, I, I'm really curious. I want to see, again, if you're following along with me on the uh, cheat sheet, all you got to do is come over to this recent form bucket, you know, hit the, the filter button over here. It's the second button from the right on the file menu that's up there. Or not the file menu, but the, I don't even know what you call the sub menu that's up here. But either way, you can see a filter there. Put it to the DraftKings filter, um, and then we can clear this out and just look at our recent form ones. So it's Rory McIlroy, it's Cameron Smith, and it's Tony Finau. Remember, this bucket is zero to two, so it, there's a chance neither of these golfers finished inside the top ten. But there's also, I would say, maybe the same chance that we see two golfers from this bucket inside the top ten. Now you already know me. I'm not going to pair two 10K golfers up together. So I'm already kind of leaning like I don't mind anchoring my lineups with like a Cam Smith, but I also don't mind putting like a Tony Finau in there. So it's really up to you guys how you feel about that. Now, the other good bucket is the recent form twos. And actually, hold on. Let me just show you what this looks like. So here are the recent form averages. So over the last seven weeks, this is their average finishing positions for each event that they played. Rory's at a 10.3. Cam Smith's at a 15.67, and Tony Finau's at a 19.25. Uh, and I have this down here recorded under this bucket here. So you can see Rory and Cam Smith's finishes over the last seven weeks, and you can also see Tony Finau. So pretty decent finishes for those guys. They're in that number one bucket. Now in the number two bucket, this again is a smaller bucket. We could select, well, Salary isn't going to let us, I'm sure, but we could select up to five golfers from this bucket to finish inside the top 10. 
Well, we have four of our 10k golfers. We have nearly every one of our 9k golfers in this bucket. So probably going to be difficult. And what might be the difference of a GPP winner versus like a second or third place is getting the top, like the 10k in this bucket correct. Because, hey, Sam Burns could finish inside the top 10. So could JT. Depending on who you pick might be kind of your downfall. Maybe Sam Burns finishes 8th and Justin finishes 2nd. Or it, really, that could apply to any of these guys. And if you do pick Burns, well, you're not getting Justin's 2nd place finishing points. That, that might be the difference of a GPP win versus a top 10, basically. Either way, I don't think you're going to be super unhappy about that. This is a good bucket to choose from. I probably would stay away from like a Sean O'Hare. Maybe some of these other guys like Nick Hardy. I think he's super talented, but he's he's just volatile. I wouldn't trust him. Um, the rest of these guys, though, I could play every single one of them. I don't think there's an issue. So you could you could start here. Find maybe two, at least two to start your lineups with. But maybe sprinkle in three or four of these guys as your core. So that's kind of how I'd look at it. And then I believe our last... Is that our last bucket? Couldn't do last year. Couldn't do strokes gain. Started with, with salaries. Went to last week. Went to course history. Went to research. Yeah, we covered them all. So those are all the buckets. I mean, I wanted this video to be short. 40 minutes in, so it's not that short. Um, I think that's where we're going to leave it. If you have any questions, email me at sweetspotdfs at gmail.com. The, the email was just up um on the screen i should say but you can also leave in the comment section that way the community can see you know what you're asking they might also have those same questions so highly encourage you guys to do you know ask me that way but if you are uncomfortable with that you can also dm me on twitter but again email me at sweetspotdfs at gmail.com um we'll be back tomorrow with a strategy video where we go over the um, anchor buckets as well as the marquee tee times and try to find golfers we want to anchor our lineups around usually you want to find i'm i've been having a lot of success anchoring my lineups around two guys at least 90 90 90 of my lineups that is so i'm going to try to find my duos tomorrow sometimes i don't find them until wednesday but at least i'll talk about my favorite ones uh, in tomorrow's video and hopefully that'll also help you figure out who your favorite anchor plays are as well a reminder giveaways i'm giving ten dollars away this week so if you want in be subscribed comment down below um if you want an additional one retweet anything that i post on twitter uh that revolves around the videos that i put out so that gives you an additional entry you can get up to four this this week comment on this one Comment on the strategy video tomorrow. Comment on the prize picks video Wednesday. I decided that's still going to be a standalone video. So um, easy one to do there. That's three entries. And then if you retweet anything on Twitter, you get a fourth one. If you're not signed up on prize picks yet, I do have a link in the description below. That'll get you straight to the sign up page with that promo code sweet spot already populated. If you sign up using that, put $20 in your account. I'm just going to give you $20 back. A thank you for using the promo code. That way you can play it for free. You'll actually end up having $40 in your account because PrizePix is going to match your deposit up to $100. So go ahead, utilize that, and hopefully you were able to follow me along with the cheat sheet that, again, I provided in uh, the description below, at least a link to get there. And then the optimizer tomorrow. I'll be showcasing it. We'll build some lineups with it with the anchors that I, that I find to be my favorite ones. If you want access to that, be subscribed, comment down below, email me at sweetspotdfs at gmail.com. Just let me know you're interested in it. That's all you got to do. I'll send it your way. That's it for me, guys. Thank you for watching. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.